Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for blessing us once again another day. Mm -hmm. This is the day that the Lord has made as we assemble here in Sound Word Worship Center. So we'd like to go before the Lord in prayer. So we would ask uh, that you would stand and pray with us, those of you that are willing and able. Father, in the name of Jesus. You, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord God, we thank you even for another day in which you have blessed. Lord, we thank you for watching over us, hallelujah, for health and strength in our bodies. And Jesus, we thank you for the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us, even during this times, Lord, of pestilence. We thank you for healing, we thank you for deliverance, but God, most of all, for salvation in thank your you holy Jesus. name. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God, we pray that you would continue to bless your anointed word. Yes, thank Anoint you. your thank speaker, Jesus. Lord. Oh, bless, Jesus. Lord, even our hearts in the receiving of your word. Thank you, Jesus. And, God, we thank you for the blessings even of this country, Lord, thank for the you, leadership, Jesus. Lord. Yes, yes, bless, God. Lord, even those responders, Lord, thank that you, are in Jesus. harm's way. In, yeah, glory to oh, God. Hallelujah. In the thank name you, of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray, hallelujah, your blessings throughout this service today. Thank you, Jesus. These and all blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Amen. His name is great, and it is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I ask that you would just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in reverence. Hallelujah. To the almighty God. Hallelujah. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the God almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, want, he is the one who is. Hallelujah. He is the one who shall come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the great and mighty God. Hallelujah. From everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. He is God. Hallelujah. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He is our healer, hallelujah. He is our peace, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he is, hallelujah. He is all of that and so much more, hallelujah. I ask that you would consider a couple of things. Who woke you up this morning, hallelujah. Who caused you to be in your right mind, hallelujah. Who put the breath in your lungs, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who gives you a sound mind? Hallelujah. Who gave you provisions? Hallelujah. To take care of your family. Provisions for your home. Hallelujah. Who has blessed you to have a job in the middle of this pandemic? Who has kept you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give thanks and praise to the almighty God. Hallelujah. Because there is nobody like him. And we love him so much. I ask that you would join us on this morning as we just simply say, Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Yes, we love you, oh God. How I love you, Father. I really love you. Just for who you are, oh God. In all of your glory. Our hearts sing on this morning, holy, 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 holy. You are everything we need you to be. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. I really love you. Just for who you are. In all of your glory, my heart sings, holy, holy, you are everything I need you to be.
really love you. I really love you. Just for who you are. Just for who you are. In all of your glory. My heart sings. My heart sings. Holy, holy. You are everything. You are everything. I need you. I need you to be. You are the great. You are the great. I am. Oh Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I really love you. Just for who you are. Just for who in all of your glory, my heart sings, my heart sings, holy, 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 you are everything, you are everything, I need you to be, I need you to be, you are the Just for who you are, in all of your glory, my heart sings, my heart sings, holy, holy, you are everything, you are everything, I need you to be. Victory 
and sing it until you see it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Victory is mine. Thank you, Jesus. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today is mine. The victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for being here again today on this Sunday here at Sound Word Worship Center. And God is going to show himself mighty today Amen. as he already has. Thank the Lord for the praise and worship that is going forth. I'm just glad to see people. Glad to see people joining us online. God bless you. Joining us here at Sound Word Worship Center. I just know that God has something in store for us. And no matter what the situation is, no matter what we're going through, God is still the champion of it all. God is still reign supreme. Amen. God has never lost a battle. Thank you, Jesus. And even when we think glory, glory, he has glory. been beaten, he rises again. Amen. And God always comes forth and comes through when we need him. So let's go to before the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you and praise you. And we thank you for this day that you have made. 
for we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you, Lord God, because you're still the lily of the valley. You're still the bright and morning star. God, we thank you, Lord God. There is yet still a balm in Gilead, Lord God, that is soothing for our souls. God, heal where healing is needed. God, and we thank you, Lord God, for you getting your word out today, Lord God, your word across the world, Lord God, for the salvation of souls. Bring everyone, Lord God, under the understanding that you are king and you are Lord. And God, we thank you for the word going forth today. God, I step back, you step forward. Let there be none of me and all of you today. According to your word, Lord God, let your word break every yoke. Let your word, Lord God, go forth, Lord God. Let the spirit and the anointing, Lord God, make alive today in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I thank, Lord, I thank the Lord again today for being here. God has been a good God. It's been a, a, a great week for me. I, I can't say that there were any difficulties that I had to deal with throughout this week. Um, but I do thank God that for every challenge that we come against and that comes into our lives, God does answer everyone. The Bible says that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. But I thank God that when God wins the battle, we get the victory. And so when God wins every battle in our lives, if we let him fight for us, we get the victory in those situations. And so I thank God for the victory today. I thank God for just blessing us today and being in his presence. I have a word today. And today it was interesting because, like I said, this week wasn't a difficult week for me. But um, for work purposes... There was some training I had to get done, and it's, it's continual training. And, and if anybody has spent any time in the military or around the military or with the DOD, they know that there is consistent training they want you to do. They always want you to train and refresh and go back over stuff. And, and sometimes it seems a little redundant, but it's necessary because even though one person may get it, there may be some other people who don't get it. Even though there's somebody who's been in the military, they may have become lax with the way they do things. Um, this training is to refresh that, to make you aware that even though you get lax, the enemy does not get lax. I'm preaching already. Even though we may let down, that the enemy is still out to do his job. And so in the military, they teach you that this training is so you understand that even though it may not seem like the attack is on you, there is still attack going on. The enemy is fighting behind the scenes. And so this week I had to do some training. Now, my training this week, part of it had to do with what we call information security. Information security. And so my message today is information security. And so what we had to do is we had to study certain things. There are, there are bits of information that are out in the world. And what the government says is like, even though you may have a piece of information and your coworker may have a piece of information and someone down the hall may have a piece of information, what happens is if you get lax with your information because you think it's insignificant, and your coworker down the hall gets lax with his information because he doesn't see how it ties in. And then your coworker in another building gets lax because they don't understand that how this information ties together. The government says what happens is the enemy can take your little piece of information, your little piece of information, my little bit of inf information, and piece it together, and they have a classified document now because they pieced all this stuff together. I want you to understand we are in a place where we have to have information security. And what we had to understand is that there are usually three classifications. There is classified information, there is secret information, then there's top secret information. Now I'm not giving any information out that isn't already out there, so don't think I'm divulging DOD information, okay? This is just training that's out there online. 
Um, but I want you to understand that we are in a position where there is information that needs to be secured. And so under this information security, under the classified, secret, and top secret, they say that classified information is information that's passed around, it's labeled, but it can cause harm in situations. It can be harmful if it gets into the wrong hands. And then there's secret information. Now this information is information that if it gets in the wrong hand, it can cause more harm. It can be even more harmful than the classified information, okay? And then there's this top secret information. This information not only causes harm, but it's severe. It could cause loss of life. So top secret information can cause loss, loss of life if it gets out into the wrong hands. And so what we've learned to do is there is a life cycle of information. I want you to hear me. There's a life cycle of information. Now, usually in this cycle, there's five. There's classification. There's safeguarding this information. There's dissemination of this information. Then there's what they call declassification. So once the information is out there and they've done what they've done, it can be declassified. But then once that information is declassified, there is also some information that needs to be destroyed. So the five cycles is classification, safeguarding, dissemination, declassification, and destruction. Today, we're only gonna talk about three of those. And we're going to kind of dwell on some of the three. The first one is classification. Classification has to do with uh, how do you determine what goes where. Classification has to do with uh, how do you disclose this information? How do you mark this information? What status do you put this information in? Safeguarding has to do with the measures in which you control this information. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere. It's how you protect the classified information. That's safeguarding. Dissemination has to do with how do you share the information you have. Because there is some information that's important that I can't just keep to myself. I need to get it to other people so they can do the job they need to do. But there's a way I need to get that information out to you. I can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, A, B, C, D is happening, you need to prepare. No, that's not a secure line, I can't do that. I can't just put classified and secret information in the mail. I can't just mail that and put it in a UPS box and send it across the United States, that's not classified. That's not how you safeguard information. And so there's a way you get this information out. If you will go with me to Joshua chapter 6, verse 22 through 25, we're going to get into information security. Information security. Joshua chapter 6, verse 22 through 25. The reading goes as such, but Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and the iron and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father's household and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even until this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. 
My message today is information security. And I really want to take my time, but not too long. I'm not going to be before you long, God willing. Because we need to understand that there is information that we have that we need to hold secure. It's not just the word of God that we need to hold secure. We're not hiding the word from the world. But we need to keep it secure within us. The enemy would love to come and steal the word out of you. The enemy would love to come and take the word out of you. And I need to tell you that there's some information that you have in you that's classified. There's some information God put in you that he says, Satan can't get this information. He may know what it is, but if he gets it all from you, and if he gets it all from Isaiah and he gets it all from Grayson and David and he pieces it together, it will be detrimental to what I'm trying to do in the world. So there's classified information. If we were to remember the story, the story starts in Joshua chapter 2, where the two spies were sent by Joshua into the land. Now, Joshua at this time is the commander in chief. Moses has gone on to be with the Lord. Now, Joshua as commander in chief has learned a lot from Moses. And one of the things he learned is that even though Moses said, okay, 12 tribes, uh, we're going to get two people out of each tribe. And we're going to send two people out of each tribe into this land and we're going to spy out the land. The information that came back said, hey, Two of them said, we got this. We can go in and take the land. The other 10 said, no, they too big. The land is prosperous. The land looks great, but we can't fight them. And so now Joshua is saying, hey, I need to look out the land because as the commander, he's saying, we're getting ready to go to war. And so I want all the information I can get before I go into battle. But I tell you, there's some classified information. And so when Joshua sends the two, he says, this battle that we're going to fight, I don't need everybody's input. I don't need everybody to know what we're about to do. I need everybody to be on the Lord's side. I need everybody to come with an assurity that we're going to do this thing. I can't let everybody have an opinion into what God is doing today. Because if everybody gets an opinion, then they bring their fear. They bring their intrepidation. They don't bring the right information. And so Joshua says, I just need two people who's on the Lord's side. I just need two people who are going in and do what I want them to do. And so these two spies go into the land and they go into a prostitute's house. Yes, I said it. It's a prostitute's house. Now, there is some understanding that she may have been a prostitute. And now when they get there, she had stopped being a prostitute. She had stopped being a harlot. Uh, there's an understanding that she had an inn, meaning it was a hotel, motel. Oh, y'all ain't with me. Holiday Inn. And so when they got there, they went to the inn. It wasn't suspicious for people to go to the inn. But I want to tell you, there are people watching your comings and goings. And I know what the Bible says. The Bible says, avoid the appearance of evil. And so the question is, why are these Israelites, these saved men going into a harlot's house. And I'm here to tell somebody, don't get caught up in what your past had you doing. Because God is about to do something and he's going to destroy everything that's done in your past. So when people look and see the appearance of what appears to be evil, God is saying those that are looking aren't even going to be around to say that was evil he did because God's going to destroy it all. I read into the lesson today that Joshua burned everything and saved the silver. So even though Rahab had a past, even though Rahab did some things that we don't consider to be godly, God said, I'm looking at her heart and I'm setting you up for victory. So take these two in. God had already prepared her heart for the two men to come in. I thank you, Jesus. And they were prepared to take the two spies in. And so when the two spies go in, she had a moment 
where she had to say, I have to take some information security classes. Do I let this information get out that's already classified? Now, you may think that in this story, all she had to do was hide the men. Well, no. The king came to Rahab. The king sent some men and said, hey, I know you got some spies in there. Your classified information has already gotten out. And so she says, wait a minute, you're right. I did have some men come up in here, but they're gone now. They left the city. I don't know which way they went. And so the men believed her, and they took off to search after the men. Now, this is where she decided to classify the information. She had already taken the men and hidden them on the roof. She did what was called safeguarding. And so when she took that, the men and put them on the roof, she hid them out of harm's way. Rahab was a harlot. Most likely she had an end during this time where prostitution did take place. But there's a position of classification we have to realize. There is a literal position we're in and then there's a spiritual position we're in. The literal position is she has a house. She has an inn. It's on the wall. It's naturally built next to the wall to where if the men need to escape, they can be let down with a cord outside the wall. She is literally on the wall. How many of us have been on the wall when it comes to making decisions? How many of us have a decision to make, but we don't know which way to go. We've been literally on the wall. We've been on the fence about which direction we need to take. But she made a decision. And with her decision, she established her spiritual position. She was unwavering when it came to choosing the God of Israel. Amen. God classified her when she classified herself. God said, I'm going to put you in a different classification. What the world sees, they see what you've done. They see your past. They've classified you as evil. They've classified you as not needed. They classified you as insignificant. They classified you as something that they can use and discard. But God says, I still got purpose for you. See, the classification that God gives us allows us to be used for a purpose. God's classification assigns a role for you. Amen. And I tell you, God's plans for you establish purpose. They establish a role. And so she hides the men. And it comes to the recognition that, hey, I need to make a deal with these men. And so now she's saying, after I've safeguarded you, I've hidden the spies, I've provided a way of escape, my faith now has kicked in. Because now I've safeguarded this information. And I know if we were to read the text, and I, I, I wish I had time, the Bible says that she begins to talk to the two spies. And she says to them, the story of Israel has already gotten to Jericho. I know what God is able to do. I know your God is the God of heaven and the God of earth. Amen. I know and I believe that what God is going to do is going to come to pass. There's no need for me to stay on the wall. I need to make a decision. And my question to you today is, when you have classified information, what are you going to do with it? When you have the word of God in your life, what are you going to do with it? When you have the faith to believe, are you going to waver or are you just, just going to get off the wall? Are you going to make a decision to safeguard your faith? And so when God comes, 
He says, I don't need to know what you did in the past. I know all of that. But I want to know what you're going to do with the information you got today. Yeah. First Corinthians 16, 13 says, be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Act like a man. Be strong. And let all you do be done in love. There are some things that we do that when we get to the place that we need to safeguard what God has given us, we need to be watchful of our faith. We need to be firm in our faith. We need to be courageous with our faith. Meaning that what happened in this narrative, Rahab said that I'm going to risk my life to save these spies. I'm going to risk dying at the hands of the king in order to save the spies. Why? Because I believe God is superior to this king. I believe God is going to be triumphant over this king. I believe God is going to win and give the victory. Yeah, yeah. So I have to make a decision. Now, I want you to understand something. Rahab didn't just make an outward decision. She made an internal decision to safeguard this information. This was not just something that Rahab did to get out of harm's way. Because the narrative says that everybody knew that Israel was coming. It's very difficult to hide over three million people. You kind of see the dust kick up when three million people move. And so Jericho had already heard what they had done when they walked across the sea when God dried up the sea and they were able to come across. Jericho had already heard what they had done to the other kings. Jericho had already heard this God that they serve is bringing them in this direction. So the information is out there. The question is, there are a lot of people who have the information, but they just don't get it. They just don't get it. There are those that have a need to know. There's a part when it comes to information security that even if I'm the low man on the totem pole and I've been given a task to do and this task is supposed to be secret, I'm the only one supposed to know me and my commander. If another commanding officer comes around and he asks me, why are you doing, what are you doing, what I need to know this information. The reality is you can actually say to that superior officer, you don't have a need to know. Now, will there be repercussions? Probably. But I tell you, the whole country of Jericho didn't have a need to know. Rahab had a need to know. And so when the spies came to her house, they said, you got a need to know. And so they made a vow with Rahab. And they said, listen, Rahab, because you have safeguarded this information, because you chose to put this in a classification that's going to safeguard it, not going to let it get around to everybody else, I'm going to save you and everybody in your house. But this is what you got to do. You got to keep it classified. And this is the dissemination part. We've gone through classification, we've gone through safeguarding, and now we're going through dissemination. They said, you can go get your family. You can bring them into the house, but nobody else can come in. They said, once you bring them in and they get the information, if they leave, they're going to be killed just like everybody else. If they get the information, and they leave and don't stay in security, all bets are off. I'm going to treat them just like they were not part of your family. And so God is saying to us today, there's information you have. There's faith you have. There's the word you have. Don't let that word get away. Don't let that word get out. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there are times when we can cast our pearls among swines. We could feed the word and our love to people that are going to be treated like dogs 
and they're going to forsake what they were doing and they're going to turn against you and come to devour you. God's saying, don't put yourself in that position. Don't put yourself in a position where the love you have is going to be trampled over. Don't put yourself in a position that the love you have is going to be turned against you. God said, I'm not making you to be that type of person. God said, I'm giving you information that's going to win you the victory. And some of this information, you got to safeguard. You can't let everybody know this information. And so I tell you, even in the world today, there's some information that God has given to his church. Part of that information says, when this is over, we're going to come out victorious. Amen. When this is over, we're going to come out winners. Thank you. There's a need to know with certain people. And so with the Bible, I love how God demonstrates what he's going to do when we classify, safeguard, and we send the information out to the right people. 1 Peter 5.13, and this is from the Message Bible. The Bible says you have to keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with all Christians all over the world. So keep firm and keep a firm grip on your faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ Jesus. And you know what? He has plans. And what these plans say is we will be put back together again. And when we get back together, it's going to be good. When our fleet feet get planted back together, it's going to be good. The information we have is that God has the last word. Amen. God has the last word. Amen. We need to understand that there is a generosity with Jesus. In the narrative, not only did Rahab get saved, but her father's whole household got saved. Everybody in the house. And they lived with Israel because they had the victory. We need to understand that you need to know there is something about information that you just can't skim over. You need to know this information. Rahab said, but I know, I know what your God is capable of doing. I know what your God is going to do. And I know your God is the God of heaven and earth. For the world today, do we know what information we hold? Are we willing to classify that information? Are we willing to safeguard that information? And are we willing to tell that information to those that are going to hold it true? What I said earlier today is that there is a need to know. The whole country of Jericho and the, the, the surrounding land um, from Shittim to Jer Jericho, that's where the Israelites were. The information was there. The information of Israelite coming, of the Israelites coming, was there. Everybody doesn't get the information. I want to explain that. Everybody doesn't get the information. It's available. It's out there. But sometimes they just don't get it. Sometimes they just don't get it. The narrative says that everybody's heart was melting from fear of the Israelites coming. That information had gotten to everybody, but they just don't get it. There are going to be people in the world that we come encounter to, and they just won't get it. Amen. The word is there for everybody to get. The love of God is there for everybody to get. And God's prayer is that everybody comes to the fullness of who Jesus is. But can I tell you, everybody just won't get it. 
there's going to be some things in our past that we're going to need to let go. There's going to be some things in our past that people are going to try to hold against us. And when you tell them, I don't do that anymore, they just won't get it. Their understanding is going to be on your past. But God says, I got a different classification for you. I'm going to safeguard you. And there's going to be nothing that's going to take you out of the palm of my hand. Information, security. Know that God has your information secure. Keep God secure in your heart. Keep his faith secure in your heart. And I guarantee you, the victory will be yours. God bless you. I know that God had me to study this word and it was interesting to me because of information security. Because of my job, um, I, I deal with some information that can't get out. But God is telling me to tell the world that the information is available, but some people just won't get it. We are going through difficult times. Yeah. But we need to understand that the victory is ours as long as we stay with Jesus. Hallelujah. But there are going to be some people that just don't get it. This information isn't meant for everybody because some people just won't get it. Don't be the ones that don't get the information. Take hold of the information and get off the wall. Make a decision to safeguard your faith. Make a decision to keep your faith close and share it with whom God has you to share it with. I pray this word was a blessing to you. And I, I just want to end in prayer that your faith be strong in the Lord. God, we thank you for the faith of your believers. Build up your faith in the believer, Lord God. Let your faith be so strong, Lord God, that we are courageous and we do what's necessary to make it to you. We do what's necessary to make it to heaven. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that when I do what's right and when I safeguard the information, not only am I going to be saved, but I'm going to save my whole family. And God said, not only are you going to be delivered, but I'm going to save your whole father's house. Keep the faith. Stand strong. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Here at Sound Word Worship Center right now, we're getting ready to prepare to take our offering. And we pray that this word blessed you. And if, if you would like to give and to donate to Sound Word Worship Center, online we do have a charitable site where you can click the button that's Give Lefi, and that money will come directly to Sound Word Worship Center. We pray over all of the offering. And we pray that this would never leave your hands. Even though it may leave your hands, it would never leave your life. We believe that God is going to bless you and return to you a harvest that is going to bless your life. Even in these hard times, God is still the owner of a cattle on a thousand hills. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God does not have lack. There is no lack in Jesus Christ. Rest assured that God loves you. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat these words with me. God, I love you. I am a sinner, but I make a decision today. God, I'm getting off the wall, and I'm choosing Jesus. Come into my life. Save me. Deliver me. Set me free from sin. And I believe you are able. I believe you died for my sins. You rose again and have power over life and death. If you said those words for the first time, I thank God. Welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that this is a process. There's information you still need to classify. There's still some safeguarding you still need to do. And the word is out there to get to you. Get into a good Bible-believing church. 
a church that preaches the word of God, all the word of God, the whole loaf. And I guarantee you, the word of God will do you good. And we thank you. Y'all have a blessed day. And I'll see you Wednesday here at Sound Word Worship Center. God bless you. You have a good evening.